Welcome, everyone. I want to thank you for joining today's webinar. Uh, with me, I have Brian Diamond. He's our EVP of Service Delivery. And today, we're really going to be introducing new software that will support users on Windows virtual desktops. And I'm not, I think I am showing my screen here now that Dot, Brian, you were asking me, and now you you got me second guessing here. So I can see I can see your screen. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> he made me second guess right before we hit start. So with that, that killed a little bit of time, and we got our latest individuals to join in here. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we jump in the webinar today, I did want to do just some basic housekeeping. So in terms of agenda, we're going to talk about what are some of the challenges that organizations are feeling as they adopt WVD and where they are in their journey. And then we're going to share with our experiences how we've helped organizations both with services but also with product that we've learned working hands-on with clients on how they can better manage and support their users on WVD. And we're going to give you a demo of that technology. We are going to take questions at the end, so please submit your questions in the Q&A box. One question we always get is this recording going to be available? Yes, within 24 hours, this recording will be available in your inbox. So as we get started, Brian and I are gonna turn off our cameras to make sure that you get the best audio and visual, and we'll come back online with our smiling faces here when we get through Q&A. All right. So I just have two quick slides because some of you may not be familiar with Goliath. So before I jump in, I wanted to give a little introduction on Goliath Technologies. We offer software to monitor and troubleshoot end user experience issues, regardless of where your users, applications, or workloads are located. And when I tell people that, one of the first questions they often ask me is, there's a lot of monitoring tools in the market today. Where do you fit? The answer is we focus on application and desktop virtualization. So if you look at the bottom of this slide, we really help IT pros like yourself gain visibility into that user experience across Citrix, VMware, Microsoft WVD, Amazon Workspaces, as well as Windows OS endpoints and virtual servers. We also are known as a health IT standard because we have purpose-built applications for all the major EMR and EHR vendors, such as Cerner, Epic, Allscript, Meditech. And the reason we focus on this is by working with organizations, we understand that the inherent complexity in supporting these environments require purpose-built tools. The general monitoring tools that are available do not give you enough insights and data to support your end users. So at Goliath, our mission, and frankly, our passion, is really alleviating the pains that many of your IT, you and IT feel when it comes to anticipating, troubleshooting, and documenting end-user experience issues. And when organizations use our software and services, they truly are able to transform their entire organization from reactive to proactive. And it's because working with these clients closely, like yourselves, we often hear about new trends, new technology adoption. And one of those trends that has been coming up a lot in our conversations is the deployment of Windows Virtual Desktops, WVD. So before we talk about some of the challenges and services and products we offer, I did wanna get a quick pulse on our audience today in terms of where you are in your WVD deployment journey. So please let us know, are you fully deployed? To the number of users that you hope to be. Maybe you're not fully deployed, but you plan to in the next 12 months, or maybe you're in a testing phase, or maybe you've joined us today and you have no plans of moving to WVD, but you're interested to learn about new technologies. So please take a minute, fill out this survey. We'll really be able to help guide a lot of our answers and our talk to you today by knowing where the audience is in that journey. I think Brian and I were talking right before we jumped on the webcast, and what we heard from a lot of our clients is they're just in that beginning part of the journey. And this is often where you see some of those challenges. And Stacy, I, you know, one of the interesting things is we're, you know, we're talking about WVD and, and why we're seeing this adoption. 
you know, all the technology that, that Goliath has been traditionally known for monitoring, you know, and in the healthcare marketplace, whether it's Citrix or VMware, has had all of these additional license costs from those manufacturers, and they all ran on a Microsoft platform. And with WVD, Microsoft has been giving away the licenses as part of their Office 365 or M365 offering. So a lot of our clients already own the licenses to use the platform. They just haven't had the, the time or experience to actually move forward. Mm -hmm. Nope, we hear that often um, as well, right? To your point, people have the licenses. It's just what do you do with them and when do you deploy them? So let's go ahead and share the, the results because I think the results really will go ahead and express that. So it looks like about 17% of our audience are fully deployed, so you're early adopters. Roughly the same amount have plans, and then there's many of you that are learning, and I suspect, based on your point, Brian, that you're gonna start that adoption, especially as you start talking and seeing some of the value that it can bring. So let me go ahead, let's jump back into the slide. All right, and with that, I'm gonna turn it over to you, Brian, and why don't you talk through some of the services that we do have to offer, especially those individuals that are looking to or are in part of their deployment process. Absolutely, so uh, th so thank you, Stacey. You know, as uh, you introduced me, I am in charge of the service delivery arm of Goliath. And, and looking at this slide, you know, our services follow a well-accepted methodology in the industry. Uh, and this applies to whether our services around Citrix, VMware, or WVD. You know, we first look at uh, your environment. We work to determine your specific requirements, make sure that what we're proposing and the journey you're about to undertake aligns. Sometimes it doesn't, and we have to look in other directions. You know, we look at your environment, your users, your applications, and your infrastructure to determine what you'll need to deliver in order to meet or exceed your end user's experience expectations. Most VDI deployments that fail are because of something simple. And it's almost always around the end user experience, not around the technology. We then work with you to develop a functional architecture that's scalable and flexible enough to accommodate changes as you grow. Deployment follows a principle of a proof of concept, which is the IT validation of the design. It, we do this to make sure that all the things that we said they, it would do in our discovery, our assessment, our architecture, and that design are actually going to work the way you expect it. We then end the end users. You know, we don't want them in the POC. We want to make sure everything is rock solid. Then we add the users. And adding users gets the end user feedback. And we work out the kinks in the system. That end user feedback is critical to long-term success. And then the final deployment should just be an extension of the pilot, just rolling in from the pilot. Sometimes we add some disaster recovery. Sometimes we add some additional features based on that feedback from the, the users in the pilot. And finally, we provide post-implementation support in a model that while it can be fully outsourced, and we will if you ask us to, it's really built to be weaned off over time as our clients become proficient and self-reliant in the platform. And you know that kind of goes to this, uh, you know, just a little anecdotal story. You, we were working with one of our clients and uh, it was on a WVD deployment. And it was a small healthcare clinic, about 300 employees. This was back in March of 2020. There wasn't a lot of WVD adoption. WVD actually was just on version one at that point. And, uh, but the head of physician services and IT had gotten together and they had this vision of leveraging mobile devices instead of computers. They wanted to use Samsungs and be able to plug into these uh, devices that would show on the screens. And everything would revolve around WVD, no more PCs. The clinician would take their device with them and when they moved to the next patient, they could bring up the patient record wherever they were and have it there. And the reason they wanted to use WVD is they already owned all the licenses. They were on Microsoft 365. And we were in the early stages. You know, the client already played around a bit. They created their own tenant in Azure. I always like it when clients have taken the initiative to set things up and we have to see where, you know, kind of the, it diverged from, uh, from the original uh, design. They spun up some degenerate, generic desktops, and they'd asked us to take the requirements and determine what it would take to stand them up permanently. Now, I remember this specifically, it was a Thursday in March of last year. 
And we were talking about their six month and one year goals for the platform, how many physicians would be there. We were working on a petitional transition plan and some with some friendly doctors. And there were some talks about this new virus that might happen in New York. And then I got a call Friday at 6 a.m. All users must be remote starting on Monday. I was like, starting on Monday? What do you mean? What do you actually mean by remote? Because in this organization, no one had ever been remote in the past. And my contact replied that all staff must be able to log in must be able to get to their applications and their data, their electronic health records, their apps. Uh, they needed to be able to send and receive email. Uh, they had to be able to get on Teams, uh, you know, to be able to communicate with each other. Uh, they were using Cisco phones that were all physical in their office. Uh, and we had to figure out how we're going to, you know, extend that. Uh, and maybe get some specialized apps as well. Now we started building out an environment and uh, after a very long weekend, we were able to get users on the system on Monday morning. I can tell you it wasn't pretty. Now, Microsoft, they weren't ready. And they just had an idea that this was a small platform and uh, just the, the number of users, they weren't ready for the large influx of users. And we were just talking 300. I couldn't imagine if this was thousands of users. Migrating the data from on-site was extremely slow. Uh, FS Logics, which controls the user profiles, didn't work the way that they had advertised it. Uh, it frequently hung up and people got black screens uh, and they would, of course, then say, OK, well, I'm going to lunch, uh, dinner, uh, come back tomorrow. A lot of these things, they took a little time to work out um, with good communications from us and the client. We were able to iron you know, most of the issues out in a very short period of time. But after about a week, we noticed a pattern in our support calls. Users couldn't connect uh, to our environment. Uh, they couldn't find their apps when they got on the environment. Uh, things just weren't the way they were on their desktops. Uh, they didn't know how to use this remote desktop because they now had a local desktop and a remote one. And the biggest challenge was that users couldn't communicate with IT. They were used to just hitting you know, an extension on their phone and IT would pick up. But in this you know, new world, there was nowhere for them to, to call. They couldn't send an email because they couldn't get into the system. And, you know, the biggest challenges, you know, as we saw, were that when Microsoft built the WVD infrastructure, they didn't build in a support model for end users. When end users were on site, they could go to the desk, you know, IT could walk around, uh, they could see the people, they could use standard remote help desk tools to assist the end users, but now they couldn't. End users were now using home machines of all types and ages. They had, uh, they had Macs and PCs, they had old Windows 95 machines, they had machines that had never even connected to uh, you know to anything but the internet. Uh, we of course found lots of viruses and patches, lots of unreliable internet. There was no visibility into whether the issues were Azure or Windows Virtual Desktop, the image we were using, or the end user, their knowledge of the system or the end user's machines. Just identifying which WVD image a specific user was connected to could take five to 10 minutes as the tools just didn't exist to identify where they were. And as we started walking through this, we said there, there has to be a mechanism for doing this. The other manufacturers on the market have these tools. And so we actually reached out to Microsoft and started working with the Microsoft uh, Windows Virtual Desktop Global Black Belt team. And they looked and said, you know what, it would be really great if you could do what we we're calling the last mile. And that's the end user support. Microsoft built this infrastructure, but we need, we need help on the end. We needed to be able to shadow the user. We need to have the end user be able to show us what their user issues were. We needed to be able to send messages to them. We needed to be able to do that individually or as a group so that we could get the, you know, the message out to them. Um, some of the staff wouldn't even give us their personal cell phone numbers. So you know, the only way to communicate with them was through the system itself. We needed to be able to isolate a server if it had an issue stopping the logins. We needed to be able to see the health of the sessions and the servers that they were on. And most importantly, we needed to be able to do that quickly. Um, when a user is having a challenge and you're in a healthcare marketplace and you're sitting there in front of a patient uh, and that patient is on a video chat because now we're in COVID world, 
and we're all remote, um, time really matters when they can't get into the system to, to enter the user's information or, or grab their health record out of it. And so once we developed the WVD Assist, all these things were really possible. End user support became really, really easy. And um, you know, the customer had a number of admins that you know, could almost instantly get onto an end user's machine and support them. And that's kind of why we developed it and where we are. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Kevin for the demonstration of the platform. He can show how it works. And then after this, we'll, uh, we'll take questions and answers. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kevin. I'm the lead developer on uh, WVD Assist. So as Brian was mentioning, um, you know, there were, there were all sorts of problems in the, in the beginning. Uh, you know, just inefficiencies, um, issues with just because of the fact that there was really no kind of end user support method available. So this was really born as a solution to many of those problems. And it reduces the amount of time it takes and increases the ease of use dramatically for, uh, for administrators. Uh, so let me just uh, show you a quick demo here of all the functions so you can get an idea of what, what it's capable of. So I have open, um, this is the program right here, and this is a test user on the right. So for example, um, if a user was having an issue, they would submit a ticket. Um, you, and if you know they're on WVD, um, you just find their username, click shadow, they will get a request on their desktop, and it's that simple. Um, you can manipulate everything on their desktop, see what the issue is, and it's that easy. Before, you would have had to query each server individually. Um, you would have to know what their username is, so you might have to look them up in AD. Um, so this just, you know, this takes a couple minutes of time down to, you know, seconds. So that's one of the great improvements that would have been, you know, a life changer um, at the initial deployment. Uh, last year, as Brian mentioned. On top of that, um, the, it also has the function to message uh, selected users. So this actually, you can highlight as many users as you like, um, and then this will send a message to all of them. And it's pretty much instant. This is useful, um, for instance, if you were to take if, if you needed to do maintenance on a session host, for example, um, you would highlight the affected users. So right here is the drop down menu. You can select which session host you would like to filter by. You can highlight all the users, click message selected, and then say something like, uh, please log off within the next 10 minutes. We're doing maintenance on this server. Thank you very much. And that will send out to everybody. Um, and uh, at that point, if when you need to do um, do maintenance, you can also use these functions here. Um, so there are two. Um, disconnect basically parks the session, saves all their data, but logs them off of the um, the remote server. Log off terminates the session. Um, so these are actually great for a lot of different uses. Um, log off specifically, um, as Brian mentioned, we were having issues in the beginning with people getting black black screens going through FS logics. Um, one of the solutions um, was simply to terminate their session. Um, typically it happens because of the server gets overloaded. Um, so if we log, log them off and just have them try logging back in, that typically solves the issues. Um, so again, if we had this program back then, that would have been much easier as it was. We had to do all kinds of server queries and it just took forever. Um, yes, yeah, so, th so those are the main functions of the, you know, this is where you would be spending most of your time as an admin. Um, so as I mentioned before, one of the um, popular use cases is to, for example, um, stop logins on a specific server. You can do that with WVD Assist. Before, you would have had to do that through the Azure portal or some other third party app. Um, our goal was to make it as streamlined as possible to do all the common tasks 
that would be otherwise difficult for an admin. So to do that, you simply click on the session host and click disable login. Boom, that's it. It doesn't log off users, but any but it stops login for anyone else. Um, and then you can enable it just as easily. As well as that, we also have the ability to do some quick configuration for each session host or for the for the uh, for the host pool. You can change the description friendly name, uh, the session limit, which is the total pool, and you can also select the load balancer type, which is great for troubleshooting. And um, for example, if you took a server down, you only have a few left, you would maybe change it to depth first, depending on your use case, and so on and so forth. Just makes it a lot simpler. Again, you would have had to go to the Azure portal or some other app to do that otherwise. Kevin, I can imagine that if you had, you know, 40 or 50 servers that were supporting your entire user base, this would be a lifesaver versus having to do that uh, through a manual effort. Absolutely. I've, you know, in the past I've had to um, do it manually and it's, it's not fun. Uh, the uh, interface, uh, it's just not easy to find stuff. You don't know what the right button to click is, you know, especially if, it, if, if it's, you know, your first time deploying, it can be a real bear to, to find these settings. But um, for the API, this is quite simple and I have integrated it into the application for ease of use. Um, so another uh, common case, um, this is this would be just an everyday thing that admins would have to do, again, through a third party app or through a Zor portal, is adding users. Um, so it, in our program, it is very simple. Um, you simply click on the app application group, and then you click add user and you enter the, the, uh, the user email. You click OK, and it will add it to the list here. And basically what that does is that gives them access to use WBD. And it's that simple. We were using a different application before, you know, ha having to have multiple windows open, having to search through different um, session hosts, it, it's, you know, unnecessary. So we have integrated it into our program to you know, make, make, li make life simple for admins. Um, and I think we've achieved that. Um, you know, we have a lot of our, um, a lot of our clients are using this to increase the efficiency of, of their technicians, and it definitely works. Um, so those are the, the main functions. Um, Kevin, back on, on user interaction, is there a way to tell that, you know, user sessions are, are hung or in a, uh, have an inconsistent state? Yes. So that, like as Brian mentioned before, that, that was one of the issues in the beginning where they would have a, a black screen. Um, what we found is um, we were able to, there, there's a possible way to detect that. Um, and we were able to implement that into our application. Basically what this does is it scans um, the, uh, the the connected users in, with using two different methods. And if they don't show up in one of the two um, queries, this will mark them um, as a bugged user, this button right here. Um, so that, that's very useful um, instead of having to, you know, wait for a ticket to come in or, um, you know, for someone to start ca calling you on the phone. Um, you can just click that and see preemptively if someone is potentially having an issue with their session. So that's another yeah, great thing. It certainly helps after uh, if someone has a problem, you can simply go and look at Mark Bug sessions and see whether they're on the list. And that would be a, a, a quick resolution, restart their session and, and move to the next step. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah, that would be a common uh, resolution uh, flow for a ticket right there. So Kevin, how how easy is it to, to set this app up? I see that configuration tab. So that was another one of our goals. Um, configuration is very simple. Um, you know, even, even the downloading process, it's, it's a portable installation. There's, you know, you don't need to install any DLLs or anything. You don't need to change the image for your, for your, um, for your session host. All you do is download the zip file. It has all the dependencies in there. Um, all you need to know for setup, um, basically is the, for, for the R model is the resource group. And um, at startup, you need to log in through your, uh, through your admin Microsoft credentials. It'll pull um, from Microsoft all of the information for your tenant regarding WVD, and it will autofill here. 
and this will be used for use in the application. For the classic, classic mode, which is version one, you would just click this button and it would switch the application over to use a different set of commands. And then you simply enter your Microsoft credentials here. And all, I need, all you need to know is the tenant name and whatever host pool you would like to be managing. Um, and that's it. And then you click save changes and it updates everything, changes your application group, session hosts, everything. Does it all automatically. And it's just that simple. You can get up and running in about five minutes. Very good. Well, Kevin, thank you very much for running through that, that demo for us. And of uh, so, you know, just a kind of a recap on the on the ease of use features of the tool. You know, shadowing users, uh, forcing disconnects or or log offs, uh, remote messaging to the to the end users. Uh, auto refreshing the results so that as you new users come on and off that, that we see those changes. We can add and remove users from application groups so that we can put them on the system. Uh, really important is that enabling and disabling the logins on the servers uh, because uh, Microsoft is known to have some challenges. And then uh, adding and removing uh, servers you know, from the configuration. I think that those are uh, you know, the, the key features and, and what the uh, you know what the help desk was asking us for and what Microsoft has, uh, has identified as challenges within their platform today. Well, great. Thanks, Brian and Kevin. Um, with that, if anyone is interested in trialing what you just saw from Kevin, you can go to this website and download a free 30-day trial. It's extremely easy to set up as Kevin shared. And if you're interested in purchasing, it's very cost effective, only is $99 per month per administrative user. So as we've shared, if this is something that you're struggling with and really supporting your users on WVD, this is a great tool that you can take, test, ensure there's value, and if you see the same value, potentially purchase. Now, as we saw in the poll, many of you are thinking about or in the deployment, so if you are interested in consulting services that can help you either at that early assessment phase, is WVD right for you, building out a rollout deployment plan, or even fully managing the entire environment, you can reach out to techinfo at goliathtechnologies.com and we'd be happy to walk you through each of those individual setups. So with that, if you have additional questions, please put in. We had a few come in and we also had some respond to our outreach pre-webinar. So I'll go ahead and turn on cameras again. And we'll go ahead and start with the Q&A section. All right, Brian's back. All right, Brian, this came from Neha. She actually emailed this in pre-webinar and asked, how is WVD Assist different from accessing RDP through VPN or a Windows external desktop utility? Oh, you're on mute, Brian. I see that because it popped up and told me you're on mute. <laughs> so. Yeah, so Windows Virtual Desktop Assistant was purpose built for help desk users to be able to remotely support the, the end user. Uh, Microsoft's uh, Remote Desktop Client or MSTSC uh, is primarily used for connecting to uh, desktop sessions uh, on your own. In order to leverage uh, the Remote Desktop Protocol the way that WVD Assist takes care of it, uh, there'd be a lot of uh, Backend coding in order to make that that function. So uh, the the two, it's basically the difference between what they're used for. You would not use WVD Assist in order to attach to a a generic session or do remote desktop. And of course, you don't need a VPN connection in order to leverage the WVD Assist because it works within the confines of the uh, Microsoft Windows Virtual Desktop environment. Excellent. Um, while Kevin was demoing, we had a couple questions come in from Alex. So his first question was, how do I add computers to WVD Assist? So in the configuration, or actually, Kevin, do you want to answer that? Um, so adding computers, um, meaning uh, a different uh, application group or... Uh, let's just sure. say that 
Butcher say that it's a different uh, so that as they use they get more servers added to their environment. How do they add them to the list in the configuration? Okay, so actually, when you add another um, session host or a host pool, it'll automatically be updated in WB Assist because it pulls the data down from Microsoft. So that configuration is is uh, you know that doesn't need to be configured here uh, manually. It is all read from Windows uh, from Microsoft. And there's no further configuration needed. So it automatically populates. Yes, it does. Okay. Great. Alex, second question there then was who are the typical users of WVD Assist? So it's the it's the help desk. Uh, you know, while we have had uh, IT typically has, you know, if we divide a larger organization into traditional IT. Uh, that has, uh, you know, server host responsibilities and or networking responsibilities. And then the help desk, which is dealing with the end user specifically, the, the tool is designed to work, on, you know, and be used by the help desk administrators. Perfect. And I think, Brian, you did address this, but we'll go with Alex's last question that he had in there was how easy is it to set up WVD Assist? Uh, it's a, a download, copy to it, and click start. Uh, once you put in your, your credentials, uh, depending on which version of WVD you have from Microsoft, uh, legacy or the, the latest one, uh, it either you have to enter your credential or it's going to auto-populate. Excellent. Um, and early in, we got a question from Raja, and he wanted to know what's included in your assessment. So we have a number of different types of assessments. Uh, the most typical assessment is, uh, is a performance assessment where we look at individuals' machines within an organization, and then we map that to what resources are needed in uh, the WVD environment in order to give the end users the same type of quality of uh, user session as they have on their desktop. It also identifies all the applications that they use, how often they use it. Uh, it does some licensing, um, you know, verification and validation, and that's the typical assessment. However, we have done assessments that you know go broader than that, which uh, internal readiness assessments. Uh, is your help desk and your IT ready to move to this new platform? You know, where are they in their uh, you know in their education journey? The typical assessment is around capacity planning and migration. Great. And Adrian asked, do you also offer migration services for Azure? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So we can take your existing environment, uh, if that's even if that's a, a Citrix environment or a traditional server-based environment, and we start with the assessment because we have that process that we go through, design and architecture. And then uh, once we've identified that all the components are migratable and that nothing's going to fall out, when we're done, we can uh, both scope and deliver the migration services. And I think too, that's not just limited to Azure, right? I have lots it of experience. It is. It is. If one of our, yes, we we do we move people to Azure, we move them to AWS, we can uh, we've moved them to IBM SoftLayer, and we also do data center to data center moves, uh, depending on where the client is uh, uh, is headed. And I think too, you know, one other thing to kind of point out to that is you talked about assessments, rollouts, it's also the health check, right? So there's a lot of times, sometimes people think it's gotta be this big project. Sometimes it's simply coming in and doing a health check and assessment, getting an outside opinion for someone with multiple true. years of experience, clients, right? Yeah, true. A lot of times the, you know, a, a health check, you know, can be a, you know, a couple of days worth of, you know, worth of consulting and we do have, uh, for depending what the client has, some fixed fee health checks available where we can go and give you an assessment of where you stand, uh, some recommendations. And, you know, sometimes uh, we find some interesting things that can help the, our clients, uh, you know, get better performance out of their systems. That's actually a good question that we've got from Lance. Going back to WVD, he asked, what are some of the most common issues you've seen when organizations roll out WVD? Oh, great. Uh, so <laughs> so the, the most common issues, you know, it's, it's interesting with, with, uh, with Microsoft, uh, the world changes daily. 
but uh, the most common issues on the on the infrastructure side are all around sizing and making sure that you have enough capacity for the end users. Um, because it's a virtual world and we are sharing resources in the way that Microsoft carves them up, that's the biggest challenge that we have is the sizing. The next thing I think is uh, the, the end user's uh, profile or expectation. I call it, I want the picture of my dog and my kids on my screen when I log into my machine, just like I am on my PC. And you know, giving them that same user experience has been uh, challenging. And then the end user side of it is all around connectivity. End users have, are sharing their Wi-Fi with their, uh, their kids or a significant other, you know, playing video games, downloading streaming movies. It all takes bandwidth out of their, you know, their home network. And, you know, on top of that, the world wasn't built for everybody to be at home. Uh, it was built for some people to be in the office. Well, you mentioned that, um, you know, one of the other products we have that we didn't talk about today is we can really help organizations isolate those root causes and show, is it something in the infrastructure or is it something to do with home office environment or Wi-Fi or user behavior? You know, we joke, Brian, you and I back and forth sometimes, it feels like we're the Citrix defense team or the Horizon defense team, right? It's not the application, it's the users, but giving that factual evidence, so. Yeah, separating out that Wi-Fi is critical today. And uh, I don't even have, I am in my office because my home shares Wi-Fi, yes. So it's, I need that dedicated bandwidth. All right, um, this came in from Sid. We have WVD and Citrix. Do you have managed services around managing these hybrid environments? Yeah, so, we, so we've got, uh, you know, managed services or outsourced services where we can perform uh, everything from basic monitoring as an outsourced to first level of support uh, to fully outsourced. And whether that's a, a single WVD environment, Citrix environment, Horizon View environment, or a hybrid of those as some of our customers have, uh, all three as a matter of fact. And uh, we, can, we can assist with the management of that platform for a, uh, you know, a fixed deliverable, fixed monthly cost. Perfect. You were talking about troubleshooting while you gave that answer. Brady asked, we're having profile issues. Can you potentially help us troubleshoot these issues? Absolutely. Absolutely. What we'd want to do is get on and determine where those uh, that profile issue is coming from, whether that's native within the Windows platform or if it's in FS Logics or another third party tool you might be using and determining uh, is it a uh, long login time? Is it processing of GPOs or is it simply not functional at all? But yes, we can absolutely help with that. Perfect. And Alex came back. He wants to know, do you have reports that can help him identify overall usage of WVD? Yeah, so we leverage the Microsoft uh, and Azure backend platform and we have uh, some reports that we've already generated for some of our other customers. Uh, it's outside of the WVD tool, but it's leveraging Azure resources, and we can show what the usage is, uh, what the users are, who's logging into the system, what kind of performance overall they're seeing, uh, and that's a over time uh, perspective. Of course, you have to set it up now in order to get reports from now forward. Can't have that crystal ball <laughs> of what was before. No, I, I can't. I can't look before the time I set it up. Right. <laughs> Um, Rick asks, how long is your trial for? So I can answer this one. It is 30 days by default, but if you're in some circumstance where you're testing, rolling out, you need a little more time, just reach out to techinfo at goliathtechnologies.com and we can kind of set those licenses for you. But by default, you download the software, it's 30 days. Um, Rachel asks, how many customers are you supporting on WVD today? So we have a few dozen customers that are on WVD today, uh, and they range in size from just a few users uh, up to, uh, you know, our largest with is little over 300 endpoints or end users. And Rick asks, how do you price? So that's that $99 per month per administrative user. So it's whether it's a help desk user or a IT support engineer. So not pricing by end user support, but by pricing of who's actually using WVD Assist 
it's $99 per month. Right. And we felt that if you had a thousand users, but you only had two admins, uh, you know, charging a thousand users license didn't kind of really make sense. And just having, you know, the two admins that are using the platform uh, seems to work better. Okay. Um, Sam is asking you, Brian, so here's your time to play analyst. Um, what, have, what have you seen about the adoption of WVD and where is it heading? Well, you know, one of the things that we've seen around WVD is, I want to call it the uh, the noise or the press around it. The Everybody, a lot of clients are looking at it. I want to say everybody's looking at it. All of the tool sets that are on the market, uh, you start looking or saying, well, we support WVD. Uh, Microsoft has been a big proponent of it. Citrix has come out and said that they have a platform that runs on top of WVD as well as uh, VMware's platform runs on top of WVD. And I think that uh, you know Microsoft sees this kind of like uh, when I provide uh, WordPad with your machine, but everybody buys Word. And I think that they've done a little bit better job than that. And in a lot of cases, there's no reason to buy you know, the, the uplifted services because WVD actually comes with a lot built into the platform. So a follow-up question to that is, are you seeing people actually move off of Citrix for WVD or is it a better together instance? So right now we're seeing that better together. The I think that there's a little bit of uh, cautiousness. Uh, you know, remember Citrix's uh, client base for the majority is larger institutions. And when you look at WVD and how they're scaling that up and out, uh, they've started at the SMB side of the house as far as the number of users. So looking at a three to 500 user uh, Citrix deployment might be considered small. A three to 500 user Windows Virtual Desktop environment might be considered large. And so people are looking at this as a better together and until that changes, I, I'm going to stick with that. All right, we have one final question. So if you have other questions, please do submit. I know Brian and I were chatting before, hoping that we get questions. It's a lot more engaging. Um, this final question is from Alex. So I hope he downloads the trial. How are you different from tools like Nerdio? Uh, gotcha. So Nerdio, uh, along with a couple of other tools, very good tools, have been on the market for you know for about um, for longer than our tool, but not in this particular space. Nerdio and other tools focus on the infrastructure, and I need to build out or scale out my infrastructure. I need to actually clone hosts or create scaling or reduction policies, and they don't really focus on the end user support side of the house we are almost exclusively focused on the end user support side of the house. All right. Well, that looks like it for now. So again, if you're interested in a free consultation, you're looking at the software, you have any more questions on the demo, don't hesitate to reach out to Tech Info at Goliath Technologies, and we'll be happy to go ahead and get a technical professional on the phone with you. So I wanna thank you, Brian, for joining us today and taking time away from your clients, as well as Kevin. It's always a pleasure when we get the lead developer to showcase the technology that you've worked so hard on. So really wanna thank both of you. I wanna thank everyone that listened today. There is a short survey at the end, so please go ahead and fill that out. I promise it will take less than a minute, but that will really help us, one, gauge the value of the content we provided today. We do these weekly webinar series. You can go to Goliath technologies.com to register for any that we have up and coming. Your feedback allows us to present the right information. Also, some of them will help us in the follow-up and make sure that we are providing you the appropriate information based on where you are in your journey and where you are in your interest. All right, well, I hope everyone has a safe and great rest of their day. Thank you.